what is going on everybody welcome back to the channel well i'm here at the italian cemetery here in colma um, again just another day where i just wandering nothing nothing really major on the agenda just kind of taking it all in uh wandering this beautiful beautiful cemetery um, a lot of unique beautiful stones a lot of pictures on stones um, it's just a gorgeous, gorgeous place. This is one of my favorite cemeteries in Colma. It's just because it's just, you, you, you come around out of here and it feels like you're in like another country almost, just by the way some of these graves are set up or even in another state as well too. Some people tell me they get like the New Orleans uh, vibe from this cemetery. So I'll have to agree. I kind of get that vibe too, or maybe like a, you know, out of the country somewhere, Italy, <laughs> you know, some of these, some of these graves are set up as well. So let's check it out and let's get on with it. It almost looks like a small town with all these private mausoleums on these rows. crazy and this place even has very very visible i mean cemeteries i've seen street signs in cemeteries before but this place too definitely more it makes it feel more like a little city when you see like the little street signs san francesco avenue on this one and then over here we are san antonio avenue so this would be san antonio avenue down here and San Francesco is, I guess, this one. Gorgeous. It's a very calm, nice breezy day. Nice breeze, not too hot. I'm loving this place. They definitely build them big in here. <laughs> Look at this one. Wow. There's an angel statue on the very, very top. I mean, look at this thing. Mori and Strada Fagioni. Mori and Strada are the three names above the door here. Unless it's the first, middle, and last, it could be as well. A beautiful, beautiful artwork above the door. This one's got in the door. It's got um, it's got um, tinted glass. So it's probably gonna be kind of hard to see inside. And plus a lot of iron work on the door. So we're gonna do our best, try to see inside here. I don't know if I'm gonna pick anything up in here, but it's, it looks, you know, looking at it with the naked eye through this, you know, through the door here, it looks awesome. Glass is kind of dirty too, so. I've noticed there's a couple there's more of these out here that have they have tinted glass over the window. It's insane. But geez. I mean, this thing's huge. So there's a Caesar Fagioni in here. And there's a he was born September 8th, 1890, died January 6th, 1965. He was born in Italy and died in San Francisco. And then there's more family in here. There's uh, Gian Battista, 1841-1929, Rosa, 1854-1931, and that was Caesar's parents. His spouse, Zelma Rose, 1907-2004, and Silvio, 1878-1955. And there's like members of two other families as well, or two other, there's two other last names in here. Uh, it's all the same family, I'm sure, but Mori, uh, that was the one I said a minute ago, and Strad, Strada. And we got Emil, an Emilio, it says, um, birth unknown and death, July 22nd, 1954. But it says, on find a grave for Emilio, date may be interment or re-interment date. So, maybe. When you're getting people out of San Francisco, maybe they brought him over here to be with the rest. It's gorgeous. Martinelli family. 
Yeah, it looks like they've got, yeah. Tint the glass over the windows. See inside too easy, but it looks like a beautiful stained glass back there. From what I can tell. Kind of got lost in here for a little while. I started taking pictures, uh, still shots for a possible slideshow kind of video too, if probably for the end of the week. Um, and I just kind of got lost doing that for a second. But this place is just, you know, it's sanity. It's just gorgeous. Um, like I said, it's one of my favorites here in uh, Colma for sure. Let's get on to see what else we can find. Now this one is one of the biggest in the place and probably the nicest. Uh, John Fugazi. He um, was the gentleman, or one of the gentlemen. He uh, was known in the community for his charitable contributions. Um, he was a banker. And he was one of the gentlemen that started Bank of America, B of A, John Fugazi. But before all that, he came to America in 1855 from Italy, and he actually had a couple of unsuccessful businesses. Uh, one was a newspaper, and the other was, uh, I guess, a line of uh, hair care products that was unsuccessful. And also, he had a bank. His bank was called Banca Colombo. It had 20 subscribers and a capital stock of $300,000 by 1900. Its resources exceeded a million dollars, eventually. And it says, uh, subsequently, in 1923, Banca Colombo merged with Andrea Sabaro's Italian American Bank in 1927. The combined Banca Colombo Italian American Bank merged with AP Gianni's Bank of Italy which would later be renamed the Bank of America. When the Great Earthquake and Fire of 1906 hit, all but destroyed San Francisco, Fugazi provided capital for rebuilding through another new bank, Banca Popular. Wow. So he had funded some of the, uh, the devastation to rebuild from the 1906 earthquake as well. This thing is gorgeous. It's just, damn, it's very well groomed, as you can see, around. It's, it's one of the biggest ones in here. And they keep the hedges nice. I'm sure the family keeps it all up nice. Again, another one with tinted windows, but we'll see what we can see up in here. I do believe he's the only one in here as well. I'm scrolling down and I'm, you know, find a grave and I'm not seeing anything about, um, you know, he's got a spouse. He has two spouses. Rosa was unknown birth date, but died in 1875. And Johanna, I guess she's in here with him as well. 1844 to 1915. I don't know where that looks like a single. It's probably for both in there. Uh, Johanna, I guess his most recent wife was born in, uh, August of 1844 in Germany and died November 26th, 1915 in San Francisco. And she was the second wife, yeah, of a Gio Giovanni John Fugazi. Can we see under the door? Can't really tell on this one. And right above, there's a actual bust of him. I could probably throw a picture of that, um, a better picture of it in this video. Gorgeous. Let's see what else we can get into up in here. This one is gorgeous. Something interesting on this one. Cavarg Cavargno. Let's 
see here. Let's go up here. Look at, there's a picture on this little interesting stone. This beautiful stone here. I'm gonna go up there and look at that, what that is on the stone. It's like, it could be, uh, it's a, uh, first name is, initial is M. And it says, died May 22nd, 1907, age 60 years, in loving memory of father and mother. Okay. But let me see what that picture is up there. It's a beautiful statue up here. Someone praying. Praying for my beloved mother. Oh, okay. Didn't make that out too good. I love, I'm finding a lot of these stones in these type types with like a little glass cubby in there and there's like a, there's like either flowers or there's like a little statue of some kind in there. This is beautiful. Giuseppe Cesari. to 19, 1883 excuse me to 1928 Frank 1975 1911 to 1975 Josephina sleeping child in there angel possibly there's one more up here I'm going to show you um, I think the last name's Lavaghi the guy was known as the olive oil king of Lucca Italy and I guess he brought his his delicious products to the United States and also at some point, but let me try to find it. I think I see it up here. It's got a, it's a big mausoleum, family mausoleum with a big angel on top, I think is what it is. Let's go check it out. This is the final resting place of Giovanni Battista Lavaghi, or G.B. Lavaghi. He is known as the King of Olive Oil. He arrived in California from his hometown of Lucca in 1865 for eight years, he mined for gold. In 1873, he established a fruit commission company, Lavaghi and Barbarera. After a visit to Luca in 1894, Lavaghi returned to San Francisco and launched the Lavaghi Import Company, which featured olive oil from Luca, Italy. He supplied most firms on the Pacific coast with his well-known product. Many Italian grocery stores across the United States stocked Luca brand olive oil. So, very interesting. After a visit to Luca in 1894, he returned to San Francisco and launched his company. The Olive Oil King. Very interesting. Beautiful, beautiful. There's an angel on top. This is gorgeous. And he's got his initials right there on the tile. There's a lot of ironwork on the window, and the window looks a little tinted as well. So we'll see. We'll, we'll do the best we can up in here, and uh, see what we can see. Oh, it's beautiful. Can't tell exactly where he is though. It's dark in there as well. And it's kind of hard to see from side to side. He's on the right side in the middle there. Giovanni Lavaghi. Little altar back there is beautiful. I got it all. I got zoomed in all the way, so it's kind of hard to see what's in that picture on the left there. Let me try something else. I don't know. I don't think I'm gonna be able to zoom in anymore, but it's beautiful in there. And on the right of your screen here in the middle, there is uh, the olive oil king himself. In India, he's got his spouse Rosa. She lived from 1857 to 1945. Uh, children, Linda, 1874 to 1962. Another child, Emma, 1876 to 1907. And Aurelia, 1878 to 1906. There's about five people in here. Beautiful. 
that's gonna be it for this video uh, like I said just a day where I just wandered no agenda no plan in mind just wandered thank you all so much for watching if you are new to the channel please hit that subscribe button and click that bell icon and if you dug this video please give it a thumbs up and all of my social media links and all my links and everything that is crypt door is in the description box below guys um, once again, it was a pleasure to bring this to you. This is one of my favorite, favorite places. I just can't get enough of this place either. It's like I said, it's like a, it's a small city almost. You know, it's got the little private crypts and mausoleums or kind of like houses along a street, you know, as you guys can probably tell. Um, and it's crazy. And um, thank you all for coming on this journey with me. And I'll be talking to you guys real soon with another video. There's a mausoleum over here that I might go do a mausoleum video in, so... We'll see. I'm taking pictures also for still shots for social media and maybe a slideshow at some point too. So talk to you guys soon.